Hey everyone, Erin from The Impatient Gardener. So today I am finally tackling something that has bugged me about my garden for years now. It is the edge of this bed that you see behind me. I never noticed, um, it, it always felt a little off to me and it wasn't until I saw a picture of our house from Google Earth that I realized what I don't like about, which is that it's just sort of randomly wavy. Hey everybody, I'm just breaking in here quickly to let you know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Give me 45 seconds to tell you why I love Skillshare and then we're going to get back to solving this problem in the garden. So Skillshare is an online community and learning resource with courses from experts in all kinds of creative and practical subjects. I've recently been watching this course called Style Your Space by the amazing and fabulous Emily Henderson. And it totally demystifies the design process and it's helping me really zero in on what I really like and how to achieve that. And it's probably no surprise that I'm finding a lot of those lessons actually carry over to garden design principles as well. So Skillshare has a new offer for you this month. The first 1000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get 30% off an annual premium membership so you can explore your creativity. And even if you've already had the free trial of Skillshare, you can still take advantage of this offer. All right, back to the video. There's no sort of intent to the edge of this border. And that bothers me. I like um, very intentional edges in terms of um, either big swoops or creating a shape. Um, for instance, on the back side of the house, we've created what is a circle ovalish shape, but the grass is um, sort of the positive, meaning the grass is basically a circle or an oval and the garden beds bend around that. I like there to be intention to the shapes of my garden beds. So this is probably specific to me, um, although I do feel like it leads to a stronger looking design in a garden. And so I've been struggling with what's happening behind me here for a long time. However, I had no idea what to do about it. And frankly, I'm sort of at a point where I'm not really interested in taking away the plants that are there. And I'm not really interested in adding a lot of garden uh, because I hate digging outside. And frankly, I don't need any more garden space to manage at this point. So that's why I kept getting pushed back, but it's been driving me nuts. So I figured it was high time we do something about this bed. So because the way that I actually discovered this issue or really what was wrong with it, because like I said, it was feeling off to me, was from Google Earth. I decided to fly the drone over this to get a better feel for what this looks like from above. And I thought I had a pretty good plan in terms of what should happen there. But then I looked at it from the other angle and that showed to me that what I was thinking about doing because of the drone just wasn't right. So I spent a lot of time thinking about this. So when I zoom out to a broader view, you can see that the circle garden is over here. Again, the circle garden is an oval. We just, the elliptical garden. Um, and then there's this bed. And I thought, okay, well that circle garden is actually really a bold statement in the garden. So what I thought about doing was actually following that edge where this bed is. So let me back this up some more so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, so here's our weevil wobbly little edge. But if you look at it from up here, you see the bold edge or very intentional edge of the circle garden. So what I did was I took a piece of string. I actually took my uh, line marking uh, devices for the vegetable garden and measured it out so that there would be the same distance from basically this corner of the garden um, to that edge of this bed and follow it all the way along until you get to sort of about here where this garden bends in and obviously if you kept following that you would end up with a lot of garden sticking into the middle of the grass here so that is where it needs to sort of fall off if we back up even further so this is the bed that continues into that if we back up even further this bed has a nice very intentional rounded edge to it and my intention always has been for it to sort of um, dip in here a little bit, although this grass goes in too far, and sort of casually come around this way. Now, what I didn't know was that uh, Mr. Much More Patient said it's really a pain to mow the lawn right in this area. You can see all that grass that sort of builds up. That's a sump pump exit right there as well. So this path 
is very easy to extend. It's just stone. In fact, it needs to be relayed again. I relay it about every year. It's just stones on top of mulch or soil. It's no big deal. So I think if we make this edge a touch curvier, bring it out a little bit farther, then we end up meeting this edge at a much nicer place. It does mean removing a fair bit of sod right in there. But then I think this border starts to make a little bit more sense and it doesn't add in that much space. I probably have enough plants here that I can just divide to fill in some of these areas. So let me lay out a hose so you can see this a little bit better. So like I said, I've been thinking about this for a long time. So an interesting thing that someone told me who I had walked this was that when you come off this path, which is essentially a path from over by where the vegetable garden is, you come out and before pre-hump, you don't even look this way because your eye is drawn over there and there's nothing in the bed because it falls, if you look here, it falls off to the right. So she pointed out that if you come off this path and you start following this path, your natural reaction is to start looking this way, not necessarily just at the circle garden. And then your eye is sort of drawn to follow this path around, which is something I hadn't thought of, but I love the idea of it because I think it makes sense. So I think this part right here is crucial. By the way, you can see how weedy the edge of this bed is because again, haven't been paying any attention to it. So I'm not going to lie. This big S gives me pause from this side, but I think, think it'll make sense once I do it. Let's hope. So I categorize this under problem solving in the garden. This is one of those things that has bugged me for a long time. Um, and I just, I didn't know how to proceed. So at some point you just have to decide you're gonna do it, dig in and see if you make it better. I have zero planting plan for the areas <laughs> that are going to become part of the garden now. But like I said, I'm not adding too much. So my hope is that I can just kind of divide some things and, and move it around at least for this year, um, rather than having to, mess up the beds a lot and put in a lot of new plants. So we'll see how this works out, but my gut reaction has always been that when I've been bolder with my, um, the lines of my bed and the shape of my beds, the happier I've been with the final look. By the way, I fully count bed structure and shape as maybe step one of garden structure. A lot of times when we talk about structure in the garden, we think of trees um, and large plantings and permanent structures. But I think structure really starts at the shape of your beds. And so sometimes if that's a little off, nothing else really jives either. So we're gonna try to make this work and see what happens from here. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna work on that now, but I hope this was helpful. Um, in case you're dealing with some problem solving in your garden, um, maybe you have a better way that you tackle these kinds of projects. But for me, it's always a situation where if it bugs me long enough, I realize, okay, that's still bugging me. I just have to make some final decisions there. And that's what spurs me finally into action. All right, I hope you are spurred into action in your garden today, and we'll see you soon. Bye.